Brambrough back with some Grand Tactician Civil War, our CSA campaign in the 1.06 beta. And there has been yet another little update to the 1.06. We are now up to 1.0634. Uh, not very much in this update. It's mainly a few little bug fixes, uh, which aren't very apparent. I, I think the biggest thing that jumped out at me is uh, <clears throat> there has been a... Uh, and this isn't a 1.06 bug. It's been in the game for a while. And this came up during my last CSA campaign in 1.05. And that is the in the military view, when you're recruiting units... Let's just get to an army here. Uh, if, you, it, if you manually recruit a horse artillery battalion, it works fine. However, with this button down here on the bottom, if, if we recruit a full strength horse artillery battalion, what uh, would happen is it would come in at half strength, like 50 troops and four guns in that neighborhood, not a full size horse artillery battalion. So supposedly that bug has been fixed. Matter of fact, it's just horse artillery. Let's just go ahead and see what we get here. Uh, well, I should have gotten something. I guess I actually have to, yeah, I have to actually choose, I have to actually select the, uh, there we go. <laughs> Nope, that's not fixed. <laughs> 45 men and three guns in a full-size horse artillery battalion. So, okay, back to the drawing board on that, Oliver. Delete that unit. Just to be fair, just to be entirely fair, I'm going to try it one more time with Bragg. Okay, so we'll Bragg here is going to recruit okay, one full-size horse artillery battalion. Same guy, Blocker. Yeah, 45 men, three guns. Which is a which is less than half the size of a full horse artillery battalion, which should be 108 men and I want to say 12 guns. Might be eight, eight or eight or 12 guns. Okay, let's get rid of that. <clears throat> okay, so there's that. Um. At the tail end of the last episode, we fought this battle here at Lexington, Kentucky. Oops, forgot to turn on my telegraph and supply on, monuments off. We had fought this battle here uh, at Lexington, Kentucky. Scott had invaded, Yule came down to chase him away, battle occurred, and they are still engaged West Virginia militia still needs to execute its retreat to rear guard action and let's see might retreat to Grayson Grayson has flipped Union because of the proximity of 32nd Army I think we'll see which way Scott goes however at in the at the end of that battle we uh encountered that exit battle bug where once in a while and it only happens if you go into the HQ reports I've noticed sometimes if you not even sometimes uh, rarely because I go into the HQ reports almost every battle and, and it rarely happens but sometimes but occasionally 
<laughs> uh, it occurs that when you go into the HQ reports there at, at the end of the battle that that when you come back out of the reports the little uh, play button at the lower right of the screen is not visible and selecting the play you know playing the battle again unpausing the battle is how you transition back to the campaign map and if it's not visible you're kind of stuck in there and all that means is really you have to save the game and then reload uh, in order to get out of the battle which I did off camera and now when it does that when you do that though it, it'll take you back to the end of the battle but not necessarily at the very end of the battle and what actually occurred uh, that I did off camera was it threw me back into the this time a proper retreat phase and there was actually a bit more shooting uh, so in this little mini alternate universe 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 that we're in here uh, on this campaign map this actually turned into a major victory just because I managed to get a few more casualties and I took a few more casualties as well but anyway, we're back out in the campaign map. Uh, and this battle icon is simply because Yule is in Johnston's army and theoretically uh, Hill's Corps was also in that battle, although I don't think Hill ever had a chance to actually get onto the field. So there's that. Still not much happening in Virginia. There is somewhere an unspotted army. Uh, Patterson's Department of Pennsylvania, again, has not been spotted for quite a while. We saw him kind of moving over this way, but we've lost sight of him. And our, you know, our, our gunboat scout line extends all the way up to just about Pittsburgh. So these routes east-west routes here Wheeling and north of Wheeling and I don't know if this gunboat can see all the way up here didn't see him crossing any, anywhere through here either not much different in western Virginia look at all these scout runs everywhere here's an interesting note uh, it's been deleted now however I did have a report earlier that Scout Run 20 had disintegrated. <laughs> and that occurred because the Union came down here, as we saw a few episodes ago, and took Fort Gardner in one of the gunboats, Scout Run 20, happened to be sitting right here under the guns of that fort. So when it flipped Union, it came under bombardment and the fleet disintegrated except for here's Scott Ron 20 which it is beat up it, it, it came all the way down here in retreat and this ship is uh, repairing it's only 52% the CSS Rob Roy it's a proper Scotch-Irish name uh so how the fleet retreated, yet also disintegrated, I don't know. <laughs> it's possible that as I was spamming all those out, I guess it's possible I could have named two of them Scout. I, I might have had two Scout Ron 20s. <laughs> I don't know. Our uh, blockade fleet is uh, not blockade fleet but our battle squadron is uh, in port now and uh, restocking its coal before heading down the North Carolina Sandy Hook blockade is almost in position to begin blockading the New York uh, uh, North Jersey area and Johnston uh, Joe Johnson 
is recovering his morale. He's back up to unstable, so it won't be too long before he's ready to go back and uh, reclaim our fort at Louisville. Second Engineering Corps, I do not know why these guys are showing high attrition. They're in supply. They've actually got a fair amount of supply. They've lost their low food modifier. Uh, they've only got 52 guys sick at the moment, which doesn't seem unusually large for a brigade. Maybe it's a little large. Uh, anyway, I don't know why he's still got the skull. And... Cooper and Anderson are currently capturing Cairo, Illinois. Which means that it's just about time for the first engineers, time for Louis Hebert to come up here to start building a fort. Okay, so I think that about covers what's happening on the campaign map. I do have some agricultural subsidies built up, and I think I'm going to build another plantation for rice. Let's see how close we are on a factory. Yeah, we're getting nice and close to yet another factory, too. The industry subsidies are rolling in pretty nicely, I gotta say. Uh, let's look at our fertility map again for rice. Okay, somewhere around Charleston, or maybe South Georgia. And how about workforce? Not very good. But you know what? I'm going to go on the theory that it's more important to maximize fertility for a plantation. It's a theory. It could be wrong. But I'm just going to build it based on that. So I'm going to plop a plantation right here in the fat part of rice fertility near Charleston, if I can find the plantation. Somewhere in here ought to be fine. Notice for a plantation, there is no pre-good, right? It's, it's a starting point. It's only... Uh, price level of the sold goods. And it looks like it's 80% all the way across here. Nope. Nope. That's a 95%. 75% rice fertility. Nah. We'll, we'll put it over here by Charleston. It's kind of surprising there... I guess there are a bunch of plantations already. I think this spot's fine. Here we go. Another plantation here. We've got enough for foundry ironworks, lumber mills, but I, I go back and, and I've gone over this a number of times. I, I think factories is the way to go. That's kind of the bottleneck in the supply chain. Not I'm not saying transportation bottleneck. We have those too. But uh, the factories is what we need, in my opinion. Okay, let's roll time. See which way West Virginia militia retreats when they extricate themselves. Not sure it matters, but I'm actually going to move this gunboat out of the way because I don't want its presence to dissuade. West Virginia Militia from retreating back up into Ohio.
I think I'm going to have Yule follow him. Not really to re-engage, but to keep pushing him and then come back up here and take uh, Hillsborough again. Boats going right past them because he's in retreat mode, and uh, really, he is going to Grayson. <laughs> oh, yeah! So, in this game, that's not exactly a bug as much as. A normally functioning feature that just irritates the hell out of everybody <laughs> and that is when armies get in retreat mode they just go where they're gonna go and they pretty much ignore anything in the way and this happens on both the tactical and the and the campaign map right we've all seen in the battles some something disintegrated what's up with that the Hudson okay so we had a naval battle somewhere well, let me let's just pause this <laughs> apparently we had a naval battle if I can actually uh... oh Sandy Hook blockade it's also kind of looking like I have historical fonts turned on by mistake all right so something up here so we had a battle up here, and uh, apparently it was a very small squadron, and not only did our Sandy Hook blockade win, but it also uh, lost little enough readiness that it's still blockading. And so, Newark, New York, Bridgeport, these ports up here are now double blockaded on Long Island Sound. But here at Newark, if I can manage to get the mouse in here and want to solve the clutter, 19% blockaded, which is pretty good considering it's an over 50 million uh, port, and so even that 19% is pretty substantial. So we got a nice, nice blockade going on there. Uh, we constructed some stuff. Markets, yeah. I had. Uh, off camera, I put down a few more markets. And I don't remember exactly where I put them. Yeah, it, right. I saw that since we lifted the blockade here in the Virginia area, I think I plopped a market here for the Elizabeth City port. And Demopolis in Alabama, which is a river port. I, I put some more markets, a, a few ports that didn't have any, in an effort to try to build more transport capacity. Indicator, yeah. That's what those were. And did we actually. It doesn't look like we captured any uh, ships there in the Atlantic. But anyway, we've all seen how routing units on the battlefield, once they're fully routed and running, they, they'll just run through the lines and no one pays them much attention. Well, the same thing happens on the campaign map and we saw it right there with uh, Scott retreating to this Union-owned IIP and ignoring the naval forces in his way. Okay, well, we can't have that because... Grayson is uh, in Kentucky and his presence and that IIP being blue affects Kentucky. 
which is back down to 66%. Virginia is at 68. Okay, well, Yule is full up on most supplies, low on artillery ammo. Um, morale's fine. Okay, we're just going to, I'm going to push, uh, I'm going to move Sidney Johnston down this way a little bit, just to make sure that everyone stays within his command radius. I think that'll be fine right about here. And Ewell's Corps is going to pursue Scott. And this is about keeping Kentucky Kentuckian. <laughs> How are we doing on Cairo? Cairo is Confederate. Now we have we now have full control of the Ohio. Well, we have full control of Ohio up to Louisville because now we've got this fort overlooking the bank here, which means I can't run uh, my gunboats through here. The fort will schwack them as it did to Scott Ron 20. So with that in mind, how's Johnson doing? Okay, he's up to determine. That's enough for us. He can at least move back up to Louisville. I mean, he could have done that anytime. Yes, but you're using the river to get over here. Now Scott should just plain retreat. We shouldn't have a tactical battle here. Oh, we just built something else. A. Oh, we finished repairing Fort Monroe. That's cool. On, you'll chase him away. Shoo shoo! Away with you, Scott, who's going south to. Oh my gosh, here we go. He's going to Paintville. Johnson to a spot where I think that'll work. Right about there. Yeah, so Yule's going to have supply problems, but you know what? So is Scott. He's going to keep chasing. Should keep chasing that force out of Kentucky. The new, there's the arrow. He should be moving. <laughs> Yule's a little slow to get going. Up, oh, Yule's got a perk. Uh, hospital, please. Thank you. Build something else. Uh, oh, our mill at Shreveport is completed that we built earlier. How are we doing on factory money? Yeah, factory. Okay, so we have this thrilling chase going on in Eastern Kentucky, running down Scott's demoralized and ragtag retreating army. Uh, but we're going to take a break and build a factory, which I know is so much more exciting to the majority of viewers. But hey, it's 1.06. It's what we're all about in this, in this uh, campaign. Let's try to find a different spot for a factory this time. Maybe something over... eastern side of the Appalachians. How do things look in the 
North Carolina, like the Charlotte area, and see what kind of spreads we get in that neck of the woods. Ooh, pre-goods actually more expensive than sold goods. That doesn't sound very good. Well, that looks pretty good. Right there on the North Carolina line, south of Petersburg, we have an, uh, we have a 21% spread between pre and sold goods and an 89% workforce. And it's sitting right on, I think it's sitting right on the railroad. I think it's a great spot for a factory. There you go. We now take you back to our previously scheduled programming. Chasing Scott in Eastern Kentucky. He's coming back north at us. And he's trying to retreat, rear guard, more rear guard. It's all fine. We're just going to get on this side of it now. Okay, Yule, you can stop. Come on back up. Chase him out. Is Hill. It's not actually in retreat mode. Okay. There you go. Scott's back up in Ohio where he belongs. Okay, now we just need to get Hill to a spot where at least he's in supply. I think I kind of like him back over in this Maysville area. Union's done Diplomacy 1. I'm sure by now they're actually getting along with the Europeans better than we are. It's probably been like that for a while. Okay, our engineers are here at Cairo. And as I talked about in the last episode, forts are of dubious value against uh, land targets. However, they are pretty darn effective against Navy. So, Louis Hebert is going to build a fort right here. On the Mississippi, Cairo. And that will help really not only drop the forts back down, 14 million. So, anyone who's been following the saga of fort costs, uh, initially there were 18 million in 1.06, and there was a lot of grousing about that. Then they dropped them to 7 million. And, like, nah, okay, that's all right. Then all the costs increased for all buildings and subsidies and everything, and Fords went back up to 21 million. Whereupon there were quite a few voices who disagreed with that. And so now we're back down to 14 million for a Ford. That's okay. There is some background noise going on. Oh, somebody's. Okay, looks like we got ourselves a fight, and it looks like we are actually fairly well outnumbered. Uh, anyway, so fort costs are maybe settled out at a happy medium of 14 million, which really isn't all that terrible in the now, at the scale that the economy now is. Okay. So we've got another fight at Cincinnati. Uh, looks like McClellan took advantage of Yule off 
chasing Scott in the wilds of Eastern Kentucky and has come down and hit Cincinnati while we only have one core present. And oh, by the way, the Army commander is not present for that either. Sidney Johnston not here for this battle. It's Hill on his own against over 40,000 men. We're outnumbered by almost two to one. Okay, so I'm going to follow what I've been doing for quite a while now, and that's uh, I want to go ahead and end this episode here. It's only about 30 minutes, uh, and I'll make this battle between McClellan and Harvey Hill in the next episode. And the two episodes will post at about, eh, about the same time. Okay, if you like what we're doing with the channel, you like the content, then leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. But at any rate, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it.